<coughs> Shalom, welcome. welcome to another episode of the Sword Cut Shopping 2 channel. My name is Priest Brother Tawabra Kar, and um, the topic I wanted to go into um, is a continuation of a video that myself and a brother Masha did about a few years ago uh, concerning Job in the Bible. Okay, we did a video called Job is Not an Edomite nor an Israelite a few years ago. Okay, it was some mixed emotions. Okay and response from the people but overall nobody seemed to dispute the facts of the scriptures that was brought out you understand and it remains still to furthermore proven that Job is not an Israelite and for the Coons and Kunalites out there he was not an Edomite neither okay but rather from the understanding that the spread has shown me that Job was a Hebrew Syrian okay according to the scriptures not according to men's doctrines not according to men's emotions but according to the word of the Bible Okay, the word of the Lord, which is found written in the Holy Bible. Okay, and um, we're going to go into the LSS Septuagint version of it, which is what the main people are utilizing to show forth that he was an Edomite. And basically, you know, we're going to continue to cut with the sword, with the scriptures to show forth that he was not an Israelite. Okay, because you got men out there teaching that Job was an Israelite. And then you got men out there teaching that Job was an Edomite. But both of them are incorrect. Job was neither or neither. Job was a Hebrew Syrian. Okay, and let's furthermore prove that with the scriptures. Okay, this will be volume two, okay, of what was done concerning the first video the brother Masha and I did a few years ago entitled uh, with the same with Job not being an Edomite nor an Israelite. That was made um, September, I think, of 2011. We made that first video. Okay, so now I wanted to go into the book of Joshua and I wanted to go into the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 4. Concerning, okay, further scriptures to further prove, okay, what is being brought out. And this is the book of Joshua, okay. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 4. It says, And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, okay, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. So during the time that Jacob and his children went down to Egypt, basically there was there for a certain dispensation of time before they ended up becoming slaves for approximately 400 years, okay? Basically, Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, okay? That's where the children of Esau, Edom, dwelt at, in Mount Seir. Now, Mount Seir is named after the Horites, okay? Mount Seir was not named after Esau. Esau did not have a son called Seir. Seir was named after a group of Gentiles known as the Horites. When you read the Bible, let's get that. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 14, verse 6. Okay, and this understanding is detrimental to the teaching of the understanding of just exactly, okay, where Job came from as far as, you know, from what region of land, named after whom. Okay, this is Genesis chapter 14, verse 6. Okay, and it says, and the Horites, okay, in Mount, in their Mount Seir, unto Elah, okay, or Suslach, El Paran, which is by the wilderness. So over there by the wilderness, okay, not too far from the Saudi Arabian region, which is basically the wilderness that the Lord considers, you have Mount Seir. You understand? And that was named after the Horites, okay, which were a group of individuals. So Seir was named after the Horites. It was not named after Esau or any of his children. Seir was named after the Horites. And that's where the children of Esau located themselves to. They located themselves amongst the Horites, and basically what they did was they basically took over that land region. Okay, and basically that became known as the land of Edom. And the Seir, the Mount Seir, okay, is basically within the land of Edom, but Mount Seir was named after Seir, the Horite. And the Horites, that was their original uh, possession, okay, that was given unto them, going back before Esau was even born and before he had children and began to populate. You understand? So let's go to Genesis chapter 36, verse 20, with that understanding. Number of scriptures here. This is Genesis chapter 36, verse 20. And it says, These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, okay, who inhabited the land. All right, so basically, um, Seir was inhabited by the Horites. And it stated that Lotan and Shobal and Zibion and Anah, okay, those are the sons of Seir, the Horites. So these are all Horites that dwelt in Mount Seir, okay, named after Seir, the Horite, which we read. So Seir was named after the Horite. We get the understanding of the scriptures. Okay, so basically in these cities, 
during this time period, most of these cities were named after, most of these cities and lands were named after um, the original man that was given that possession by their forefathers after the flood through Noah, Sun, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And you can read more about them in Genesis 10, which we're going to read some of those in a minute. All right. So basically, Seir was named after an Horite. You understand? So now, um, I want to go into the book of Joshua. Okay. But before I go into the book of Joshua, I want to validate the book of Joshua. Okay. As far as being, okay, a book that is meant that we can read and take scripts from according to the Bible. Okay. And as so long as it doesn't contradict that which is written and the Bible mentions it, okay, we can utilize that for knowledge and, and for doctrine. All right. So let's go to Joshua. Okay, chapter 10, verse 13. Okay, on that aspect. And this is the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13. And it says, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So the point I wanted to make was, this, uh, this event that dealt with, with Joshua and things of that nature within the book of Joshua was furthermore explained in the book of Joshua and the Bible refers you back to Joshua okay so now here's another scripture this is 2nd Samuel chapter 1 verse 18 okay this is the book of 2nd Samuel okay chapter 1 I believe it's verse 18 let me see it here 2nd um, Samuel yep chapter 1 verse 18 and it says also he bade them teach the, I'm going to start at verse 17 to get the understanding. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in a book of Joshua. And that is written, I think, in Joshua chapter 56 verse 9. So Joshua is a good book for brothers to get if they want a little bit more understanding of certain things that happen in the Bible. Okay, it's basically Old Testament influence and goes into some of the stories in the Old Testament, even going back to the time of the flood, okay, or prior to the flood, okay, um, from Genesis, the first chapter, and so forth. So the bulk of the information in that book is, is good to use for doctrine and is very profitable. And one of the things that um, we're going to utilize out of the book of Joshua, which is very profitable, is getting an understanding of us. Because men are teaching that Uz was named after Esau's son named Uz, and that Job being from the land of Uz was because he was an Uzite, meaning he was an Edomite. I've heard certain men mistakenly teach that as doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to promote Job to be an Edomite, okay? And trying to discredit that the Edomites are the so-called pale-faced, red-faced people on this earth today. Okay? They're trying to say that, you know what, the Edomites are dark skinned, okay? And they're trying to say that when we call the so-called white man Edom, that's not doctrine. So what they do is they try to say Job is an Edomite because of the us factor and they and because of another factor in the Septuagint with Jobab, which we're going to get into in a minute too as well. And they try to say that, you know what, Job was an Edomite and it says in Job chapter 30 verse 30 that he was dark. So therefore the Edomites is not the so-called white race, okay, basically. Okay, but yes, the so-called white race of pinkish reddish tone or the children of Edom, they're the devil that the Bible speaks of as a nation of people. Okay, now you do have some of them amongst them which are pale faces, which descendants can go back to the early Europeans of Japheth, because Esau did mix in with Japheth, which you can read also into the in the book of Joshua, concerning with Zepho, okay, for example, and also in the book of Chronicles with the king of Deneba as well. He was, which I think we might read that scripture later on, but um, the king of Deneba was not an Edomite, but yet he was king over Edomites. Okay, when you get to understand and do research on him, he was a Japhite that was king over Esau. So you had Esau Japhite mixtures, in which that's going to be another video topic I'm going to do concerning the Macedonians. To show that the Macedonians, for example, Alexander, Philip his father, as well as his generals, which were all Macedonians, were Edomites that mixed in amongst Japheth. And that the fact they came from T-Man, because the scholars have brought out through information that the Macedonians come forth from T-Man. Or the Timani, or the Timendate, named from Timan, which was one of the sons of Esau through Elaphaz, which was his father. Okay, so we're going to get into that and further shows and views concerning that aspect. But for now, we're going to stick to the Job aspect, since this is volume two of the book of Job, to further prove he was not an Edomite and he was not an Israelite. The volume two aspect of the video, Marshall and I did about a few years back. Okay, so now we read out, we're going to read the book of Joshua. Okay, chapter 10, verse 34, and we validated it through two scriptures in the Bible 
meaning um, Joshua chapter 10 verse 13 and 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 18 validating because you know I don't like to go into no other books in my show okay brothers who know me from from the past like five years I've been making videos they would know that to rob doesn't bring out any scripture or any information unless it corresponds or correlates with the Bible concerning anything from the Bible okay anything that's of biblical essence or anything form of teaching is coming out the Bible okay and I'm not going to say anything unless I can back it up with at least two or three scriptures and you know, they said that sound doctrine and preceptor. So brothers know me already on how if I'm going to go into another book such as Jasher, that's because the Bible referred me or referenced that book for me and permitted me to go into that book to get further information about certain things that was going on in these specific times. So I did that concerning Job. And I'm going to Jasher chapter 10 verse 34. And y'all brothers at home, fellow subscribers, that could also do that yourselves. And when you read Jasher chapter 10 verse 34, this is what it says. Okay, this is Joshua chapter 10, verse 34. It says, The children of Aram also went and built themselves a city. Okay, and they called the name of the city Uz. Okay, after their eldest brother. And they dwelled therein. That is a land of us to this day. Alright, so Uz, okay, was named after an Aramite Syrian named Uz. The land of Uz, the city of Uz, which later on became known as the land of Uz. And we can back that up. Let's go to Job chapter 1 verse 1 of the Bible because see this is where Job was from. Okay, this is where Job was from. Okay, this is the book of Job chapter 1 verse 1. It says there was a man in the land of Uz, alright, so Uz named after the Aramite, not after Uz the Edomite because men are stating that because Esau had a son named Uz, the land of Uz was named after him. No. Okay, according to the book of Jasher, and for the fact that the Syrians and the Aramites were there before the Edomites' existence, that land region or city was named after them, the, the Shemites of, 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 of the Syrians. So Job was in that land region. Why? Because he was one of them. And we want to further prove that. Furthermore, concluding to what was already dealt with and brought up before in the first volume video the brother Masha and I did. So now, here we go again. Job chapter 1 verse 1. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. So now we know through Jasher and through the scripture that we put out in, in Genesis, uh, okay, if we haven't done that, we will do it later, that uh, when we do the research, Aram had a son named Uz. And basically, the city of the land of Uz was named after him. So Job came from that land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared the Most High and eschewed evil. Okay, so he was a Hebrew Syrian from the land of Uz, named after Okay, Uz, one of the sons of Aram, a so-called Syrian. Okay, we get to understand it. Or a Syrian, because the Bible mentions Syrian. So not so-called, meaning after what a man labeled them as, as after the Lord gave them their names, based upon their forefathers or whatever. So a Syrian was what he was, okay, from the land of Uz, which was a land, okay, that was owned and mainly preoccupied by the Hebrew Syrians. You understand? And we just read that in Book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 34. So now let's further prove that Genesis chapter 10 verse 23 showing forth that, guess what? Aram had a son named Uz. That was the land region that Job came from. We just read that in Joshua. So now let's further prove about this Uz factor. This was way before Esau was even thought of or created. Okay, this is before Isaac. Okay, and this is before Abraham, if I'm not mistaken, or during his earlier teen or early years. This is Genesis chapter 10 verse 23. And it says, And the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash. Okay, those were the sons of Aram. Uz. And we read in Joshua where Uz had actually created a city which later on became the land of Uz. Okay, which you don't hear too much about the land of Uz because there were so many Gentiles that came in and out of that land region. One of them being Esau and Edom. Another one being Ishmael, the children of Joktan. Another one being the Hebrew Syrians, as well as uh, some of the Hebrew Israelites as well. You understand? So you had the land of Uz basically became part of other Gentiles that came later on territory. But it was originally called the land or the city of Uz. And that's where Job was from during this time that the book of Job was written corresponding to the time period of the story that's being told. You understand? So let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 17. So there's no mention of him being an Israelite, 
and there's no mention of him being an uh, Edomite. And the reason why I continue to bring out about him not being an Israelite, because men like to think that only the Israelites are fear God, so therefore they say that Cornelius was basically an Israelite because he feared God, but then I always cut him with, well, what about Job? Then they must make Job an Israelite to fit their doctrine. But there's no evidence to show that Job was an Israelite. Okay, they try to say he was Job, uh, 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 the Israelite, when the time period of Job was when Israelites were in Egypt in captivity. Okay, so now, which was further on spoke about in previous volume, if I'm not mistaken, if not, a volume three, can, there's enough information for me, Lord's will, to make two more volumes on Job, which I'm not done yet, but I told y'all, you know, I don't like to do it right away. I like to just sit back, do a lot of other topics and subtopics and doctrine cut videos. And then, you know, I let these videos surface for a while, and then here I come with a with a vi video, volume two, okay, after that, based upon something that was done for years back, you understand? So this is what I'm doing here with Job volume two, because I always tell brothers, you know, more information, guess what? We will make another video in later time, most I will. So now, let's go into First Chronicles chapter one, verse 17, and it says, the sons of Shem, okay, Elam and Asher, and our facts add, and love, and Aram, and us. Backing up what was spoken about with Moses in Genesis. Here the chronicler is saying the same thing, that Aram had a son named Uz, which was one of the sons of Shem. So Job was a Shemite, through Aram, through Uz. And it says, um, and Hall, and Gether, and Meshach. You understand? So those were all the sons of Shem, okay, which later on basically became the Syrians, through Aram. You understand? So that's basically what the land of Uz was named after. It was named after Uz, the Aramite, or the Syrian. Okay? Now, when you jump down to first, verse 43 in the book of First Chronicles, it starts to go into the sons of Esau. But um, actually, when you drop down to verse 43, it says, Now these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. And it says, Belah, the son of Beor, and the name of the city was Deneba. Now, that was not an Edomite. When you do the research, that guy was a Japhite. Okay? But yet, because we read the book of Joshua, it tells you Edom didn't really trust each other to be kings over them. So, yes, Edom did set foreigners over them to be their rulers. Okay? Because when you do the research on this guy from Deneba, that was not an Edomite, nor an Edomite city. Okay? Um, I think Deneba was, was, I think, in Africa, somewhere in northern Africa. Not quite sure, but I, think it, I don't even think it was in the Middle East. And I think Japhite had some influence in that location. You can also read about that in the book of Joshua. But this guy, Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of the city was Deneba, this guy, Bela, the son of Beor, was not an Edomite. Okay, but yet he was a king over Edom. All right, so there you go. So now we read verse 44. It says, and when Bela was dead, Jobab, so this is what men like to say, this is Job. Because it says, Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Bosra, reigned in his steed. The problem with that is, first of all, it says Jobah, not Job. The second problem with that, it says, he was the son of Zerah, and in the book of Job, it don't tell you what son that he, Job, was. And then it says, Abadra, but when you read the book of Job, it says Job was from the land of Uz. You understand? So that's not, Abadra is located um, in Edom. You understand? I think that was their capital. You understand? That's not land. That's not the land of us. That's not where the Bible said Job came from. And it said Job from Basra. There was a man by the name of Job from Basra. No. It said Job from the land of us. You understand? Not Basra. Not Job out of Basra. This is a different character all in itself right here. And it said rain in his stead after Bella died. Then I believe he was the uh, first Edomite king, Job, the son of Basra. You understand? Um, and 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 uh, of, of Basra rather, the son of Zira of Basra. Okay, so that's Jobab, which is not the same as Job, although it sounds similar to the same, but it's two different names. And then all of a sudden, one is from the land of Uz, and the other one says he's from Basra. You understand? So there you go, right there. But yet, due to the fact that the Peshitta, so uh, not the Peshitta, because they don't even say that in the Peshitta, which is one of the oldest Syrian books that I know of to research, unless somebody could show me something older than the Peshitta concerning Syrian doctrine, or document of biblical reference in itself, but also too, um, they don't say that anywhere but in the LSX or the Septuagint, that that same Job was the same as Job, okay, that you read about in the King James Version concerning Job in the land of us. So we're going to get to that in a minute concerning that. So 
Jehovah was from Basra, not us, according to First Chronicles. And Job was identified as being from being was not being from Basra, but from us. Let's go back to Job one and one. And it say nothing about him being from Basra. Or that his name was Job. This is Job chapter one, verse one. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And it say a land a man from Basra. And it said his name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Okay, so there you go. So I don't know. Hmm. Go figure. You understand? Edomite was wicked in Basra too. We read about that in the book of Isaiah. Mosiah said he was going to stomp on Basra. Okay, because I think Basra it means great gatherer. Not quite sure it means great gatherer or whatever. So the Mosiah made a pun off that name by saying that he was going to stomp out Edomites like one that shut up in a wine fat. We read Isaiah 63 because I think Basra represents city of grapes, a grape gathering. Okay, so in ancient times when men used to make wine or women, they used to step on the wine, or step on the grapes rather, before they fermented them. You understand? So it was a pun on that Basra name, how the Lord would come on Edom and basically stomp on them as well. Okay, when he comes towards Edom and stomps on them with his feet, like one that tried up in a wine fat in his anger. Okay, and instead of liquid, the wine, it would be blood instead. So most of hates Esau or Edom anyway. So majority of the Edomite men were, were wicked, in fact, all Edomite men are wicked. All, none of these Edomite men would ever try to serve the Most High. That's why men had to be so desperate to say Job was an Edomite, because Job was a man that feared God, and there is no other record of any other Edomite anywhere in the scriptures that actually feared the Most High, as far as the males go. As far as the females go, 99% of them was off and wicked as well. They liked Israelite men, but they also worshipped pagan gods, like during the time of Solomon. But as far as I know, the only one that, that actually, you know, was an Edomite that actually feared the Lord was Eunice. Okay, the Jewess. Because the Jewesses was Edomite converts. There were Edomite women that converted to our way of life, like Drusilla. We read the book of Acts, the 24th chapter, where Drusilla was wicked as hell, despite the fact that she was called or considering herself a Jewess from the house of Herod, which was an Edomite. But another Jewess was Eunice, which was Timothy's grandmother, if I'm not mistaken. She was an Edomite. So the, the most high of Paul basically brought out her faith, okay, as far as teaching Torah unto Timothy, as far as dealing with the circumcision aspect fact of how that was supposed to have been done, but yet Timothy's father was a Greek, so of course that wasn't to be done in the household because the Greeks didn't believe in circumcision. Greeks meaning he was a Greek Israelite, not a Greek meaning, because there's no such thing as a nation called Greeks. Okay, Greek just is another form of word for Hellenism or Hellenists. Okay, that's all it represents, all right? There's no such thing as a nation of people called Greeks. They're known in the Bible as far as the Aborigines as the sons and daughters of Javan, which was the sons and daughters of Japheth himself, the son of Japheth himself. But that's another topic in itself. So now, let's go into this LSS issue with the uh, Septuagint, which is another word for it. They call it the LSS, 50. Okay, so now let's go into this aspect of this LSS issue. First thing to cut the Job LSS, we're going to go to first. Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19 okay staying in the scriptures okay as usual okay no other way this is 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19 and it says for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high for it is written now where is that written that we won't find out in a minute for it is written see Paul's quote every time the New Testament says anything about it is written it means it's a quotation directly coming from the Old Testament so it says for it is written he take up the wise and their own craftiness. So now we got to find out to get to the point where is this written at that Paul's quoting? Let's go into it. Matter of fact, correlates with one of my topic is going to the book of Job. Let's go into it. Let's go into the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 13, which is what Paul was quoting in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. Was Job chapter 5, verse 13. So let's go into Job chapter 5 verse 13. Men got to start becoming a walking encyclopedia of scriptures, man. Men have to become on that level where they, they it's like, it's hard for them to talk anything but numbers and scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? Men have to become like a walking calculator of the word of God, man. That's how men have to be, okay? Men have to become that way, man. Conversations include at least two or three scriptures and numbers and verses, man. I mean, that's, the, that's what we should strive to be because we should, you should strive to be like Yahweh Shah. Christ was the word of God, you know what I'm saying? So if he's the word, everything he basically said and quoted was coming from scripture somewhere, you know? So that's, the show should be nothing but scriptures, okay? 
because men gotta take notes, right? I mean, how are you gonna take notes based upon words and, and hearsay and conspiracy theories and Alice Jonism? Okay, I thought we, we, were, we were men of the law. We're supposed to be taking notes on scriptures, right? So let's go into staying the scriptures. Now let's go into the videotape, okay, like Warner Wolf back in the day of just going to these clips of Gentiles and what they got to say with their propaganda and their conspiracy theorists. Let's stay in the scriptures, the word of the Lord. Let's go into Job chapter 5, verse 13, which is what Paul quoted in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 13 says, He take up the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. But the point that I wanted to make was a part of this scripture that Paul quoted, which was, he take up the wise in their own craftiness. So that's what Paul was talking about. When you read 1 Corinthians 3, 19, he actually quoted Job, okay, a heathen. He quoted Job concerning what was said in Job the fifth chapter. So now when you go into the LSX, which is a Septuagint, you're gonna see something totally different. First, let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19 again. Where did Paul quote from? Did he quote from the Job and the KGV, K, KJV? Or did he quote from, from Job and the LSX? Here it is. 1 Corinthians, okay, chapter 3, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, because you know certain people like to say, well, the Old Testament, the King James, is basically the Masoretic text, which came much, much later on. But you got to understand certain scriptures that the um that was translated you know was found in the Qumran caves you understand concerning what will later on become known as the Masoretic text the Qumran caves you know what i'm saying which you can do research on yourself concerning that where the dead sea scrolls are found that you understand which was some of our elders and forefathers that had these original writings tucked away whereas in the bulk of judea was into hellenism and idol worshiping some of our forefathers decided to get the hell away from these niggas Okay, and just decided they was going to basically stay in the caves and isolate themselves from that known Hellenistic pagan world and stay amongst themselves dealing with the word of the Lord. They had some of those records. So you have some of these Old Testament scriptures and some of these documents, such as what was written in the book of Job, that was found in these Qumran caves amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls. You understand? And let's quote 1 Corinthians 3.19 again, and it says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he take up the wise in their own craftiness. So the point when it says that he take up the wise in their own craftiness was a direct quote from Job and the King James Version Bible, chapter 5, verse 19. Because see, men, they hate the King James Version Bible because it cuts a lot of their doctrines. You understand? So they want to go into all these different other books, okay? But the King James Version Bible is, a, is the most compatible version to the Hebrew Torah and the Tanakh. You understand? And basically, it's the most profitable English translation Bible that we, as men of the Lord, that speak English-based words and read English-based words, can utilize to teach and preach this gospel. And see, certain things are in this book that men don't like, that they like to promote. Then they want to go to the book of Enoch, when they want to go to the Septuagint, which the Septuagint is the oldest translation of the Old Testament, so they say it. Okay, that goes back into the time of Ptolemy and the 70 elders that he had, a legend had it translate, you know, into the Greek for all the Greek speaking Jews out there. And so he could have in his library. Legend has it, you understand? But also legend has it that not all those 70 elders were on point neither. And a lot of them was also um, told by Ptolemy and his men to include some form of paganism in there as well. Now, this is what certain scholars have said. Am I running with it? If it's not scripture, I don't. So therefore, I could care less. All I know is Paul quoted Job in Job in the King James Version Bible. Now, when you read Job chapter 5, verse 13 in Septuagint, instead of saying for the wisdom of this world, like what we just read, Job said in um, um, King James Version Bible, Paul quoted, he said, he took for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, it is written, he take up the wise and own craftiness. Now, when you read, read that's what's said in, in Job 5.13 in King James Version. When you read Job 5.13 in the Septuagint or the LSX, it says this. This is Job chapter 5, verse 13 from the Septuagint. It says, Who takes the wise in their wisdom and subverts the counsel of the crafty? That's not what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. So now, since Paul did not quote, remember the New Testament was written in Greek, okay? The coin, the coin of Greek, if I'm not mistaken, it was written in Greek, okay? And the Septuagint Old Testament also was written in Greek. So how come these words are not the same or identical? How come the LSX in the Job version says one thing, but that 
the Greek New Testament, the first Corinthians 319, Paul says another, and it's actually a direct quote from Joel, okay, chapter 5, verse 19 from the King James Version Bible. And the King James Version Bible from the Masoretic text was translated from the Hebrew, okay, which is our original tongue, you understand, and our original writings. So there you have it. So now that opens up a whole level of suspicion concerning that whole damn book of Job from the Septuagint, man. I'm not really questioning all these other books in the Old Testament and Septuagint because I'm not trying to just totally discredit the Septuagint. I'm just not trying to discredit the book of Job in the Septuagint, okay? Because, see, in the Septuagint, which is, this is another, okay, doctrine that men are using to say Job was an Edomite was because of what it says in the last chapter, the last verse concerning how it says this is the same as Job of the Edomite. Okay, written from an old Syrian Aramaic text, and I'm trying to figure out well, where is that Syrian Aramaic text? Because the only the, the oldest doctrine of Syrian text that I know of is the Peshitta, and the Peshitta and the Book of Job and the Peshitta doesn't even say that. Okay, it don't even say that. So I'm trying to figure out well, what Syrian book states that Job is the same as Jobab in the Book of Chronicles or in the Old Testament? I don't I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. See, what you're going to have to understand is, is that that is what you call added commentary. And when you do research on that, you will see yourself that it's not written in the Peshitta, it's not in the Masoretic text, it's not in the Tumult, it's not in a lot of these Old Testament English Hebrew translations, okay? It's only written in the Septuagint, and it doesn't, it doesn't even, when you go and see it yourself, get a damn Septuagint and go to the very, I think Job 42, Okay, and in the Septuagint, when it speaks about, okay, that this is the same Job as Jobah, it doesn't even fit scriptures, like a few paragraphs down, and it's like some damn couple of semi-sentences put together, spaced out, like, it don't even look like it belongs with the other scriptures and verses in the Septuagint. It's what you call added commentary, meaning it's not true. That is a doctrine that got put in there. And that by the way, man that was put in there by Ptolemy, and he ordered that to be put in there. Okay, now I have my suspicions. I don't have the facts. So that's why I'm saying if I be a betting man, okay, because for the understanding of Ptolemy was an Edomite, and all these damn Greek heads were Edomites that mixed in amongst Japheth. And basically, for them to say that Job was an Edomite to put it in there, that's the same as Job when nobody else Prior to, the, uh, prior to the time of the Greeks, meaning we're talking about the Babylonian, we're talking about the monarchy with King David, we're talking about the Persian, we're talking about the monarchy with King Solomon and all the, and all the Israelites, whether they're Syrians, and everything that led up to prior to the Greek Hellenistic influence of Israel, even after the book of the Ten Tribes left that land, nothing, nothing is stating anything that Job was an Edomite, man. Right? Even in the book of Job, it don't even say he was an Edomite. It said he had a friend named Eliphaz a Temanite. But it don't even say that Job from Basra or Job of Basra. Hey, what, son, what son did Job come from if you're going to say he was an Edomite? Okay, he don't even make no mention of that. You understand? He had a couple friends, I think, with Syrians, like Uz or Buzz or whatever. Okay, but, um, you know, it don't really make any mention of him being an Edomite besides the added commentary that you men like to run with at the end of the Septuagint, which cannot be found validated in any Syrian document or anywhere else in the Septuagint or in anywhere else in the Bible or the scriptures for all that matter in the King James Version. Paul even quote from the book of Job in the Septuagint. So that leaves a loophole of question and suspicion when it comes to the book of Job and the Septuagint or the LSX. You understand? Especially knowing the Greek and Ptolemy's influence on it, you damn right we have a right to question it. You understand? So, with that in mind, okay, let's go into our uh, number chapter 23, verse 7. Okay, this is the book of Numbers. Okay, chapter 23, verse 7. It says, And he took up this parable and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram, okay, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. So, Aram is from the mountains of the east, okay, as it is written in the Torah, in the book of Numbers, concerning that, Aram is also um, synonymously referred to as from the men of the east. So now, 
of the mountains of the east, rather, excuse me, the mountains of the east. But see, when you go to Job chapter 1, verse 3, what does it say? That Job, okay, was amongst and compared to Job chapter 1, verse 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man this man was greatest of all the men from the east so Job belonged in the family classification of the men of the east and out of those classifications he was considered to be the greatest of them all okay so Job's identity and nationality is amongst the men of the east and what we just read in Numbers chapter 23 was the children of Aram were known as being from the mountains of the east. We just read that in Numbers chapter 23 verse 7. So that is Job's identity, being of the children of the east from the land of Uz, not an Edomite nor an Israelite, according to scripture, okay? According to the scripture. Let's go back to Genesis 10, okay? Let's go back, okay? Let's go back. Okay, let's go back to Genesis chapter 10, verse 22. Scripture. Okay, Genesis chapter 10, verse 22. And it says, The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, and Luz, and Aram. Verse 23, like we read earlier, it says, And the children of Aram, Uz, and Hall, and Gether, and Mosh. Now, let's drop down to verse 30, because it names all the people that came from that lineage, right? Drop down to verse 30, it says, And their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest unto Sephel, a mount of the east. That was what the Syrians and the Aramites were classified as amongst the Shemitic Hebrews, not Edomites. Where the hell is Esau located into that region? He wasn't even created yet. Okay, this is basically even before there was an Isaac. This was before Jacob, and this was before or around a similar time of Abraham. It's dealing with these people from Shem and Aram, okay, and Jotham that was in that region, which is the same region that Job was from. We read Job, the first chapter, verses 1 and 3. He was from the land of Uz, from the children of the east. He was not an Edomite. And the cool actually trying to go to Isaiah 11 chapter on me. And it was so damn laughable, okay? Trying to say Edom is included with that men of the East because you have to look at the direction that the Lord is going to know, man. Let's look at the scripture, okay? As it, as it is written, okay? Edom was not identified as being from the East. Edom was not identified as being from the mountain of the East. He was not identified at all as that concern. Nor was it their land or a city or a state or any form of sovereignship named after one of the son us, but rather it was named after Aram, who had a son named us, way before Esau had a son that he called him us. What are you talking about? Esau, his land was Seir, which he took from the Horites, when you get to understand it. And Seir was named after them, like we explained when I first opened up this lesson. Where was Edom in Genesis chapter 10, verse 22 from 23 and 30 as being identified as being from the east? We just read in Numbers where it said that the children of Aram is from the east. Let's go to Genesis chapter 20, verse 5, and I'm going to close it out on that for this volume 2. Most I will, I'm going to make a volume 3. I'm not done yet. Most I will, volume 3 will be done. Furthermore, cut harder into this doctrine of Job being an Edomite or Job being an Israelite. There's no scripture that says neither. Okay, or neither. This is Genesis chapter 28, verse 5. And it says, And I have sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram. Now, when you go into the Hebrew, it says, Sons of the East, Bum Padan, which was brought out in the original video that the brother Marshall and I did a few years ago. Bum Padan, which means Sons of the East. So when it says, And I have sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram, which is the Sons of the East, okay, unto Laban, son of Bethel, the Syrian. Not the Edomite, not the Israelite, but the Syrian. You understand? And it's not a trick, it is the, the your trick. And the fact of the matter is, is the facts is what makes your doctrine laughable and makes us the men of the Lord and men that strive to be men of the Lord serious in what we teach and what we preach as it is written. Or 
according to the scripture and not according to your doctrine and your God loves the white people type of fanaticism. Okay? So now with that, I'm going to close it on that. And then it's volume two, okay, of who is Joe, not the either my nor Israelite aspect. Lord's willing, I'm going to make a volume three in future shows, okay, concerning this. All right? But with that, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, 22. There is no peace, save God, unto the wicked, despite the fact I will say shalom.